In general, objects wish to rotate about their center of gravity or center of mass. It's simply easier to rotate about the center of mass, which is why if you don't want an object to be involved in the torque, you put the fulcrum at the center of mass, which is what we do for seesaws. Here is an example of a pole vaulter that's holding with both hands, like pushing up, pushing down, and the center of mass is also acting as a rotator. So notice what's happening. We've got right hand, left hand, and weight. We have three forces acting, and also three forces are producing a torque. In this example, because the pivot point is, or the fulcrum, is not at the center of gravity, we must include the weight of the pole in the torque equations. Now, what if the rotation axis is inside our object? We do have to worry about inertia. So let's introduce the concept of inertia. So something's moment of inertia is formally the sum of all the little masses at some distances from the rotation axis squared. So this is important. This is distance from rotation axis. Even though it looks real similar to similar mass, it is not. So we look at all the little chunks of mass at this distance from the fulcrum, and then we sum over all the pieces. Now this is of a particle generically. When we use the idea of, well, what if the particles, they're smaller, they're closer together, then we can expand the concept of addition or summation into an integral, which is where this table comes from. We use this version when, which I call the particle version, when the rotation axis outside object. So they guess where you have to ask yourself, where is the rotation axis? So when it's outside ob object, we just use this form, which means if we have a kid uh, rotating on a merry-go-round, and he's sitting that far from the rotation axis, that's the mass of the kid, this is what we use. Now, what if the rotation axis is inside? So that's what the difference is. If the rotation axis is inside the object, you must use the table. That is a non-negotiable. So you have to ask yourself, are we a hoop or a hollow disk or are we a solid and cylinders and disks really are the same thing it's just a little bit of um, eh, it's just getting into details about how thick you're going to call a hoop versus a disk versus a cylinder it's a matter of the height so but they're treated exactly the same way so we can do disks we can do spheres and we have rods which are here And um, a slab or a plank is treated the same way as a rod. One of the issues we must deal with is what is the moment of inertia itself. It tells us how hard it is to get something to rotate. This is analogous to mass in the Newton's Law equation. Mass is the resistance to change in motion. So if you apply the same force over different masses, the observed acceleration is different. So same mass, different masses, the higher the mass, the lower the observed acceleration. This is no different. The higher the moment of inertia, the harder it is to get that thing to rotate. So it's the same analogy. In this particular problem, we know that in general, torque is the distance from the pivot point, we apply a force and the sign of the angle between those two vectors. What I want to introduce is another version of torque relating to the moments of inertia. 
we know the force is the product of mass and acceleration, where mass is actually the quantity that resists change in movement. Turns out torque has a very similar form, where torque is a product of a mass term, which is the moment of inertia, and an acceleration term, which is an angular acceleration. So let's introduce what angular acceleration alpha means. So this is angular acceleration. Okay, so when we things move in circles, like a disk spinning, what we will now have is a di angular displacement, which is in radians. That's just like how many degrees did you lift up the ramp? That would be defined as angular displacement, but we're used to talking in terms of degrees. When we say we have an incline, we raise it up to 30 degrees. Well, that's degrees. That's the wrong unit for angular rotation. We do want the angular rotation or angular distance unit to be radians. Now we have angular velocity, which is radians per second. And then angular acceleration, which is radians per second squared. So here are our units for angular values, which means now we can rewrite the torque equations. And usually it's in this form when we have forces involved and we have angular acceleration involved. This is the form of torque we will be using when we combine forces and angular acceleration. 